Our next interview is with Osmia Pharmaceuticals, again, a biotech company that completed a phase three clinical trial for a chemotherapy drug that treats ovarian cancer. This is an unknown story, very undervalued. Let's go to an interview with the CEO. Julian, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. I want to start with that you raised 10 million recently in the U.S. with a NASDAQ listing. A number of institutions in the U.S. participate in this capital raise. One of the few companies, actually, you're one of the few companies that go public in a long time from Sweden. Now, what is it that these institutional investors, these very sophisticated investors, saw about your technology and your company that made them want to invest? They like, first of all, when it comes to our most advanced product, public car. There is only one competitor in the market, in U.S. or globally, which is uh, Abraxain. Uh, Abraxain is a similar product as Paclical. Both are be given or giving in the same dose. Paclical has a more high inventive step since it's fully water soluble and solvent free. But the most in interesting thing is that uh, it's a very significant market and very limited competition. So besides Abraxan today, there is no one with this kind of uh, uh, drug. So th this is one of the most interesting things for the investors. And also, having said that, our other products are also uh, entering uh, the same concept uh, in a very, very large market, limited competitors. Now your lead, uh, your lead cancer drug, Paclical, has generated strong interest. You've gotten orders from Russia for the treatment of ovarian cancer. I want you to talk to us about what sets this drug apart from the current standard of care. First of all, uh, the product is water-soluble, solvent-free, and this gives uh, a much better patient convenience. Uh, there is no pre-treatment for the patients, much faster infusions, uh, and uh, less hypersensitivity uh, reaction. You, you announced over $9 million of orders for this drug so far. How big is the market opportunity? I mean, this market is uh, much bigger than uh, uh, most of the people say or know. Uh, uh, I mean, there are over 300 million people in this region. And uh, the good thing is that uh, this kind of products have just started to be reimbursed by the state reimbursement system. And this will, of course, uh, push sales and, and uh, volumes in the future. So we are very excited and positive in this market. Okay, let's back up. You said there's over how many people for this particular drug? No, no there, there are 300 million inhabitants in this region. So it's a pretty it's, it's a big market. A bit, 300 inhabitants in, in the region where yes. the drug is being sold. Okay, so it's a very, very large market opportunity. What are some of the milestones that we can expect going forward with this program? So the milestones which you could expect is that we are expecting submissions and and market approvals in Europe, in US, and in other parts of the world. And uh, also that uh, we are in, in discussions to sign up different distributors, as we have in, in Russia and CS countries, for Europe, for US, and for emerging and remaining emerging markets. So, there are uh, act many uh, upcoming milestones when it comes to this. Julian, let's talk about your CE mark approval. What's the timeline? We are expecting to submit the, uh, in the beginning of next year for the European Union. And we expect to receive a market approval end of 2016. Europe, and then uh, we are still waiting for our OS data, overall survival data which should be matured in the coming uh, first, first half of next year. Once we have that, we will be able to submit to the U.S. In best case, that we will have a market approval in the U.S. end of 2017. And meanwhile, you're selling into Russia a very large market opportunity there. Yes, of course, during the coming year, uh, we will also, of course, submit to, to the other regions, of course, based on our European submission and Russian approval. Now, your oncology platform, you're also addressing needs in animal health. I want you to talk to us about that program and the size of the opportunity there. Yes, um, the animal health uh, space or the companion animal health space is a, is a very potential big market. It's, it is uh, unique in that sense that there are only in the U.S. over 80 million registered dogs. We know today that dogs are almost like a family member. We know that uh, uh, dog owners are willing to pay for, for their pets. Uh, 
and uh, it, but it is a new market. Oncology and cancer treatment is new, so this is a market which we need to build up coming years. So it's a it's a very big potential, but it will take some time to to build up this market. And that's and that's what we are focusing on in U.S. currently. Okay, and what's the process to quote build up that market in the U.S.? The process is that. Today, cancer treatments are mainly done by uh, the specialized hospitals. The main uh, goal is to get general practitioners in new course in the future to get educated and to feel comfortable to start treating cancer in their clinics. The, then the market will be uh, much, much bigger and will start picking up. Now, your success has not gone unnoticed on Wall Street. You recently raised 10 million. You actually exercised the over allotment in the offering. So that was a great success. What does this influx of capital enable you to do? Uh, first of all, it will take us to this next, le next level, which is our commercialization uh, uh, phase, which is very important. And for us, sales is uh, the, the most important thing next year to push, and also uh, to push our remaining products in our pipeline and our second product. So this will be the main thing for, for those money. Julian, what's the essential value proposition for investors today? Uh, we are a, a, a very late-stage company. We have a unique validated platform, which we have done through all the clinical trials. We are focused in a segment which is uh, growing uh, uh, very fast uh, in, in the pharmaceutical industry. This is oncology, and especially novel uh, chemotherapeutic formulations are very uh, largely used in the world and they have very limited competition. So with our technique to, uh, to enter the market with better formulations in first and better patient uh, convenience is, is a very interesting thought. Thank you so much for being with me today. We look forward to introducing you to our institutional retail investor network. Thank you so much. My value proposition for Osme Pharmaceuticals, it's simple. Let's look at the industry competitors. Look at Adapt Immune Therapeutics, $628 million market cap in a phase two clinical trial for ovarian cancer. Pharmamar, $764 million market cap. They are in a phase three clinical trial for ovarian cancer. Clovis Oncology, $1.2 billion market cap in a phase two clinical trial for ovarian cancer. Market cap today of Osmia, about $130 million. Big discrepancy, the median market cap for the group is 764 million. I'm telling you, it is only a matter of time before the institutions pile into Osmia Pharmaceuticals. You want to be in before that happens.